mean, he's still here, right? The sun's about to come up, and he's still here. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Pirates in the same place that you found this. Penguins versus Capitals tonight at PPG Paints Arena. That's a 7.08 p.m. face-off, and you don't care. <laughs> I mean, look, I did the same thing that you've been doing. I keep checking my phone, my texts for any original information. I keep checking social media to see what somebody else might have called somewhere else. And there's just Zippo on the Jake Gensel front. Last night was supposed to be the night that Kyle Dubas would get the trade done. That's the message that had been sent out. That's what two Canadian reports had. That's what I had the previous night. Didn't happen. Why? Well, according to one source that I have in Nashville, Dubas was asking for a ton and wasn't about to back down. And that's kind of what I've been advocating for all along. I've said this before. I'm going to reiterate it here this morning now that there's an even more intensive interest in this process. If Dubas gets overwhelmed by an offer, yes, absolutely, move on it. If he has something coming his way that looks or feels like it's franchise changing, oh yeah. But if there's a couple of things that have become clear or clearer over the past 24 to 36 hours, it's these. One, there isn't going to be any sign and trade. There just isn't time. Not between now and the NHL's actual trade deadline tomorrow at 3 p.m. No way does a sign and trade get done. Two, take a look around the league. There were a lot of moves yesterday. There were a lot of moves for forwards who are rentals, a couple of whom might not have been exactly in Jake's class, but weren't that far from it. And the returns that those teams got for those players as rentals were pretty lame. They wouldn't be something that would move you enough to send out your second best player at the peak of his NHL career when he'd really rather stay. And as I've also been insisting all along, the dumbest thing that Dubas can do in this scenario is to make a trade involving Jake just for the sake of making the trade, just for change's sake. That wouldn't be dumb. That would be idiotic. And here's where some of this conversation can kind of start crossing wires, because I've gotten the impression from some of the feedback that I've gotten to this show and some of the stuff that I've written that I'm totally all in on keeping Jake there's just nothing that could happen. It's just about sentimentality and it's about keeping the band together or whatever. And that's all nonsense. And it's all counter to stuff that I've actually spoken and written. I'm very much in favor of turning the page. I'm very much in favor of the team getting younger, significantly younger. I've only been making that case for, you know, a couple years now. But there's a difference between deciding to try to get younger and doing something that's dumb or worse, idiotic. You can't begin to imagine how long my list is of guys that I'd be happy to see get shipped out of here. I shouldn't say happy. There's nothing wrong with them, like as people or in some cases even players. But I'm talking about just for the actual furtherment of the franchise. Is furtherment even a word? That's how long I stayed up. That's how long I stayed up. Trade Ricard Raquel. I like him. But... Go ahead, move him, send out five million a year, trade Riley Smith, trade Tristan Jari. Who'd miss him? Who'd know he was gone? Except when a third period comes around and you'd see actual saves getting made by somebody else. There's all kinds of market out there for goaltending. All kinds. Can't believe one didn't move yesterday. You put him on the market, he might be the most talented guy, if not necessarily the most consistent guy, who's available. Go nuts! Move him! 
You can throw Alex Nedeljkovic into that pile as well. I think he's been wonderful for the Penguins. He might have gone a little bit over his usual bar, but that's the perfect time to trade somebody when the price can be higher. Here, just just so that you know I'm genuine on this, because this one, this, this, this goes to the depths of my hockey soul, but go ahead and trade Lars Eller. I think he's been wonderful. I think he's actually been to some extent a godsend for this team, both on and off the ice. I don't think people realize how much of an impact he's had in that locker room on certain guys. Doesn't matter. Hasn't worked. The cumulative effect can't be argued anymore. We've seen what we've seen. Go ahead and move these guys. If you were to somehow magically move all of these people that I just mentioned, and I don't even know that that's mathematically or cap-wise possible, but just throwing it out there, if all of them were to get moved, you'd have roughly a quarter of the payroll, a quarter of the cap space freed up, just like that. But instead, you're going to send out one of your most important assets at the lowest possible value, meaning as a two-month rental. Because we are, to repeat, past the point of being able to do a sign and trade. And by all accounts, a sign and trade was never something that really was going to happen anyway. Don't do this. That's all I'm saying. Don't do this in this circumstance. Things can change in a heartbeat. If someone calls you this morning, this afternoon, even tomorrow at you know 2.55 p.m. and they blow you away and they say... Here, Pittsburgh Penguins, here's our top prospect, or one of our top two or three prospects. Here's a first-round pick, just to make you feel better. And oh, by the way, here's a 27-year-old defenseman who's better than Ryan Graves. Okay. Okay, do that. But that's not what's occurring right now. And that's what I'm reacting to. When we come back, J1Q... Today's J1Q comes from Kevin, who sent me this shortly before I began recording. He said, TK, I've been checking my phone and watching NHL Network all night. I'm hoping Jake stays. I'll tell you what. It's been heartening for me to see, hear, and read people expressing that type of sentiment, Kevin. And I don't just mean this about Jake. I mean this about a lot of guys who will be relevant to their franchises and to the city for an extended period, I I really, really get turned off whenever a reaction to a situation like this will seem ice cold. And it feels like that happens more and more and more commonly with each passing year, where everything's seen as some you know, assets to be moved, or you're trying to win a trade as opposed to winning a championship or helping to win a championship the way Jake did in 2017. Now, I don't want to make too much of this. Jake's not uh, somewhere in, you know, the pantheon of franchise history with a Sid or Gino or Latang or Mark Andre Fleury or going back to the previous generation, you know, 66, 68, and those guys. He's not that. He hasn't even been around long enough to have been part of the 2016 championship team. But he's been around long enough. He's brought enough big moments, had some massive moments in the 2017 Cup run. But also after that, when he was the guy that almost single-handedly blew away the Flyers in the Penguins' most recent playoff series victory, if you can think that far back. And he's also been, and this is no small thing, the best left winger Sid's ever had. And he's been that to such an extent that there isn't even a debate anymore. Remember, we used to actually, you know, fuss back and forth over, you know, Marian Hossa, Pascal Dupuis, Chris Kunitz. No, it's Jake. And then there's a pretty big blank spot before you get to the next. But a lot of the sense that I've gotten here, and I'm not going to lie, I'm always going to level with you, okay? If I lose listeners or readers over just expressing myself honestly, I can always live with that. Because in the longer run, it pays off to just say what's actually on your mind. I've gotten kind of turned off here 
in recent days. Everyone got really upset over the Western Canada thing, and I get that. Those two games in Alberta were really difficult to digest on a lot of levels, not just in the short term, but in the long term. You knew watching those two games, that was it. And that was it. That's the way it should be. But I have a problem with having a broader sentiment that this team needs to change and get younger and then to just throw everybody into the pile as if that somehow is logical. It's not. You don't make dumb or idiotic trades for the sake of making them. Once more, with gusto here, if you're going to do this, you'd better first try to move any or all of these other people that I've mentioned. You don't do it with just Jake, or even primarily Jake, or even Jake at all, if you don't get back a fair and reasonable return. Not a fair and reasonable return toward, oh, here we go, this is it, first step, look at us, we're getting younger. No, a reasonable return for that player at that point in his career and considering and weighing that player's potential value to this franchise because he is affordable and he will only become more affordable over the span of his extension because all of these living legends that are here right now won't be here and because the cap goes up and for a whole bunch of other reasons I appreciate you sending me that note, Kevin. I appreciate everybody who listens to Daily Shot of Penguins, and you better believe we're going to have another one of these tomorrow. 